<laughs> oh, hi. Sorry. <laughs> it's Megan, and Carolyn's right there. Hello. And Amanda's in our group, too, but she's not available right now, so, yeah, otherwise she'd be in the picture, obviously. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, this is our amazing sun diagram, and I'll be using this pointer for dramatic effect. This is the sun, and it gives dramatic heat and intensity to, um, the Earth in different positions, which causes the seasons. So the Earth throughout the whole year is at a 23 and a half degree tilt, and sometimes it's way or closer to the sun. And the tilt is always pointed towards the North Star, right here, Polaris, and that's really pretty. Um, but anyway, so back to the di diorama. So right here we have the winter solstice, as conveniently labeled, and the Earth is rotating this way counterclockwise as it appears in the North Pole and um, clockwise as it appears in the South Pole. And um, we have labels the Tropic of Cancer, equ Equator, Tropic of Capricorn. And in the winter solstice, the um, most intense and direct sunlight um, goes to the Tropic of Capricorn, which is right there as you can see. And that's right there. And that is actually 23 and a half degrees south, which correlates to the um, tilt. Then right here, as we move on in the cycle, is the perihelion, which is the um, time of the year, January 4th, when we are, the Earth is closest to the sun. And which is really funny because it's in the winter, so the distance from the sun has nothing to do with the seasons, because in the northern hemisphere. So it all has to do with the tilt. And as we're moving on, it, we have the vernal equinox, which is also known as spring. And um, the tilt, there is a tilt, but it isn't really direct, directed. But it isn't the. Uh, <laughs> it isn't towards or away from the sun. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't get this word out. So right here we have the Tropic of Cancer, the equator, and the Tropic of Capricorn. And um, the equator is getting direct sunlight, even though it isn't really well shown in this diorama, because um, if you think about the Earth being tilted like this, only it really isn't, um, the equator is going to get direct sunlight. So, um, that, and vernal equinox means equal night. Oh, and solstice, I forgot to mention, means sun stop, sun stop but I'll go into detail on the summer solstice. Um, but equal night because um, the because the direct sunlight is hitting the equator everywhere else has equal day and equal night usually um, and then moving on in the orbit is the summer solstice and again solstice means sun and stop and that's because as you're going in the like if the sun starts here it seems to be in the highest point like right here and then it keeps going down <laughs> so, the, the, okay, let's, so um, then we have again labeled on Tropic of Cancer, Equator, and Tropic of Capricorn. And right here, the Tropic of, An of Cancer is getting the most direct sunlight. And um, so, because of the tilt, and that is also 23 and a half degrees north because of the tilt. Um, then moving on to the aphelion, which is the place where we're farthest away from the sun. And, which is really fun because we're in summer in the northern hemisphere and we're farthest away from the sun. So again, it has nothing to do with distance. And then moving the on. The aphelion occurs on July 4th. Oh yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not going to date. Then finally, in the autumnal equinox, equal night, um, it's also fall. Tropic of Cancer, Equator, and Capricorn. And it's the equal... Um, night because the direct sunlight is hitting the equator. Um, sorry about that sun. <laughs> I didn't mean to hit you. So, yeah, this is a sun with amazing glasses. Oh, yeah. Anything else to add, Carolyn? Did I forget anything as usual? Nope. That's okay. It. So, okay. yeah. I'm going to show you how the sun's, ang sun the sun's light is less or more intense depending on the angle it hits the earth at. Okay, so I'm just going to turn off the light so you can see the flashlight better. And only focus on the middle ring because it's just easier to visualize. Okay, so, so I'm... right there. Yeah. So I'm... Oh, by the way, this is Megan talking. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm holding the flashlight 
at a 90 degree angle, pretty much, closely, and um, the beam is. Yeah, the beam, sorry. And so the closer to a 90 degree angle, or the bigger the angle is, mm -hmm. the more direct light that there's going to be. And as you decrease the angle, you can see that the middle um, part of the beam it's stretching out. stretches out. And so then the light would be less intense. And I also have this earth here, my earth puzzle thing. <laughs> and so I to help also gonna... demonstrate. Oh, should I just put it down? Okay. Yeah, I'll hold it. So that's like a 90 degree angle. I'm not actually doing it on the equator. I could. Where is there's North America? There's a clear. Oh well, no, it's like right. Yeah. Somewhere around there. I thought it was something on here. It's right here. It's that blue. Oh line. yeah. Okay. <laughs> so there's the Sorry, equator. guys. <laughs> Had a little technical thing there. Okay, so there's the equator. And that's like a 90 degree angle. And then, as I um, make the angle smaller, do you see how the, like, the light's like spreading out? So here in North America, or around here, gets a lot less direct rays. So in writing, we get a lot direct, less direct rays, and we don't get any direct sunlight which makes it not nearly as hot and tropical as it is on the equator. Yep, that's pretty much about it. Okay.